All right, Craig. We have just talked about accounting, and now mm -hmm. I would like to invite you to talk about gold and Bitcoin and gold hoarding empires. And first of all, Craig, what is gold for you? Um, it's a shiny sort of yellow metal. Mm -hmm. um, is it an insurance for you? Like, do you um, would you say it's a safe haven or something like that, or do you just see it as something that's maybe not even necessary in the future? Oh, it's necessary. I mean, it's used in electronics. Um, does it have a purpose in financial systems? Not really. Yeah, I mean, I mean the, uh, most of people the, value it. So that the only reason to hold gold is because people value the damn thing. Um, I'll give you an example um, for the NFT craze where people talk about, um, uh, I saw something how there was an $11 million NFT. Um, carinsurance.com went for just under $15 million. Insurance.com for about $35 million in the past. Uh, privatejet.com, 30 million. A um, uh, friend of mine, back when I worked in Aussie Mail, owned hotel.com for a while. Um, so uh, I chose to IP squat because uh, I had 64,000 IP, uh, like C classes, uh, which made me a bit of bunny, but nowhere near as much as those who domain squatted. And I thought that was completely stupid because IP addresses uh, actually have a use, whereas uh, there's so many ways of doing something like um, internet.com or insure.com. So um, simply put, I mean, where do you, like, I... do you like, do you like gold or not? Maybe that's easier to answer. Personally, I'm just wearing personally. some, I mean, okay. I've, I've got a wedding ring. It, it's, um, uh, it's not gold, it's platinum, but uh, like my Harvard class ring is, um, is gold. Um, it's got shiny things on it and, um, and that sort of stuff. Uh, I mean, do I wear it as, as jewelry? Yes. I mean, there's, there's gold in my Rolex. Um, but I mean, is so, this an investment? No. I mean, I, I, I mean, yes, I could flog my Rolex off, but I don't think I'll get as much money. I mean, there are some watches I own. Uh, my Patek, uh, I had a, a, a 47 um protect that's worth a lot more than it started at but generally speaking uh, if you add up all the watches i've got and all the gold jewelry i've got it's gone down in value it's it's um it's a commodity um uh, so a, a, what do you call it a, a veblen good that you buy and uh use to expose sort of well jewelry is, jewelry is like the use case for gold but most of the gold is probably start in vaults and never even sees the sun ever. So I'm just trying to compare gold to- Well, the that, that's sort of assuming that you actually believe um, that it's actually in the vault. Um, okay, okay. I mean, um, I've been involved in audits before, I mean, including in the Perth Mint. I, I mean, um, so you have to go over all the, um, having each of the rooms in the vault audited and marked and photographed at the same time. Mm -hmm. And so, does it happen? Uh, or Oh, it, there's so many times when things happen. I mean, I've been involved with gold companies that had titanium rods in. Uh, we destructively audited a gold bar once, as in cut it in half. And... Um, we, well, we attempted to cut it in half. Gold is actually easy to cut in half, but when you hit a titanium rod, it actually is rather hard to cut. <laughs> so um, I've seen all these sort of fun things that people do. And the reality here is um, uh, it's expensive, it's heavy. Um, the only reason it really existed was no one had anything better at the time. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's interesting. Do we have something better now? Yes, it's just a record keeping system. I mean, the amount of gold is a token of a measurement. So do we have a token or a measurement? Yes, we've got lots of them. Okay. Um, you had a talk like two or three years ago about gold hoarding empires and mercantilism mm -hmm. and bullionism. Could you tell us, like, what's the problem? What's the problem with empires hoarding gold? Uh, well, gold isn't actually 
I mean, apart from a small level of jewellery and electronic use, gold doesn't really do much. You can't eat gold if you're hungry. You can't, I mean, I guess you could build a bridge out of gold, but you would need a hell of a lot of gold and um, it would be a really, really heavy bridge. And it's not terribly efficient and it's soft. So over time, as trucks go over it, it would sag and eventually it would do one of these whole collapsing into the uh, the river or ocean things. So, I mean, the reality is gold has uses. Um, it, these things, uh, the watch um, looks pretty, looks shiny. Yeah. Um, but it's just like diamonds. Uh, for every diamond in um, um, sort of circulation, there's like a hundred of them uh, sitting in um, uh, vaults um, from De Beers and things like this, so they don't flood the price and they let it out slowly. The reality is there's no real value. Okay, but let's go back to the gold hoarding empires. Is the problem with gold hoarding empires the gold or the fact that these empires hoard commodities instead of trading, instead of interacting? What's the well, problem? the reason they hoard gold is they, they think that that's wealth. Gold isn't wealth. Money isn't wealth. That's the error people used to make. This is what Adam Smith wrote his um, treatise about. I mean, the whole notion here is the wealth of society is the capital goods, the consumer goods, the things that we're creating, the services, the economy not the thing we use to measure it. So gold sounds valuable until you realize that what happens if society collapses? What happens if suddenly tomorrow producti uh, productivity goes down by 50%? Then that gold doesn't suddenly make you rich. I, so the, I might so the, yeah. So the problem with the hoarding, with the bullionism, wasn't hoarding gold. It was hoarding. As a as correct. A, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's but, believing that if I hold a whole lot of this stuff that I use for paying my debts, um, that that in itself will make me wealthy. But that's the error. It's not. That's not wealth. Capital goods yeah. and, um, and yeah. services and creation and industry and trade is wealth. So people mistake um, sort of the notion of what wealth is, and that's where the problem happens. I would put forward that the utility of gold is um, an accounting system, jewelry, and nowadays computer hardware. Would you uh, say that the utility of Bitcoin is more than that? Gold's not an accounting system though. I mean, it could be used as a high-end cash system. Um, and by high-end, I mean high-end. Most people in the world uh, in, in history never saw gold in their life. Um, gold was used for settling uh, sort of government accounts. Um, people didn't ever use gold to pay for anything, uh, apart from a few elites. Silver? Um, even then, one silver coin uh, was like the per diem uh, per day. So uh, most people didn't deal with silver other than large scale savings and, and purchases. Uh, the majority of people used um, either copper or um, lead, uh, other processed sort of goods. Um, if you were buying your day to day things, your groceries, going to the pub, it would actually be a lead token. Uh, most most people don't realize this, but there's lots of evidence of it here around Europe. Um, if you go back into um, the history, you find all this. And sitting there going, um, but there's a one pound coin. Well, really? So what? Um, we're not talking about the um, estate holders who own 60,000 acres of land in Britain, which is what most historians write about in the past. Uh, I'm talking about the 99% of the population who would never have seen a, a, um, uh, a gold coin in their life. Uh, even today, and, even today. Um, well, most people can afford to see a gold coin in their life today, but they just don't care. Yeah. Um, I'm putting forward in um, 
be Roman times. Uh, mm. There were taxes were mostly only accepted in gold and apparently in some medieval countries as well, because apparently, and feel free to correct me afterwards if I'm wrong, mm. uh, gold was hard, more harder likely, to forge. More likely silver. Um, um, and, and then the... what you're you're doing is at the governor level, so you're confusing the tax collectors uh, and what they had to pay to the state with the actual people. So the way that it worked was the Romans used a tax farming industry, and they would sell the rights um, to collect taxes in a province. So the tax collector, um, which of course are mentioned all through the Bible, no one liked them. Uh, would go through and collect up all the wealth that they could and milk the people as much as they could. Uh, and from that, um, they would get enough gold or silver to pay the Romans. Um, and the way that that worked wasn't like a percentage tax now. They would buy the right. So I would go, I think I can milk Jerusalem for uh, a thousand shekels. Uh, so I'm going to go to the Romans and say, I will give you 800 shekels to do this province. I want to go back to the gold hoarding empires um, a little bit. Was mm. there a counter example, Craig, in history of an empire that didn't hoard? Um, at what stage? I mean, um, uh, empires, yeah, yeah. Uh, not everything was an empire for a start. I mean, if you go back to Athens, um, the Athenians were a republic. Republics weren't common, but there were plenty of them. Um, Venice, Florence, um, they were comparatively small. Um, so the difference was you didn't really, you had a commercial group in most of these, like the Venetians or Florentines. Um, but yes, mercantilism was considered how you do economics um, up until um, Smith came along. I'm trying to get to the core problem of hoarding. Um, what is the difference between saving and hoarding? Um, well, saving, you should actually have your money active. You're trying to grow your money. So um, to be a little bit biblical, I'll... Um, uh, sort of try and point you out to the um, parable of the talents and the servants. Uh, and uh, what we should look at is the castigation of the individuals who um, sort of buried money, hoping mm -hmm. that it will just be there. I mean, gold is not an appreciating asset. Um, over time, the value of gold um, decreases compared to the economy. You actually need to have something like a Fortune 500 um, sort of stock portfolio to uh, manage your money and stay even. Um, and I would actually argue that um, you need to be close to a um, uh, S&P 500 uh, sort of investment portfolio really to stay even. Everyone says, oh, you're making money, but yeah, that's because the economy is actually gaining wealth. It's gaining knowledge. It's gaining information. So, um, so hoarding is really about not investing, not creating, not risking. If you have gold sitting in a vault, you're not building a company. You're not building wealth. You're not investing in things. It's not circulating. Right. In economic terms, hoarding, because when I thought about hoarding, um, I thought, well, greed. Greed is a, the reason for hoarding, but, but greed is a character trait, right? It isn't an economic term. So in economic terms, we could maybe say hoarding is a decision to not trust other humans, like in interacting with other humans. Well, it's an anti-trade yeah. anti position. Yeah, so, exactly. I mean, um, if you get anyone who's a little bit of a watermelon, uh, you know, green on the outside, red in the middle, they'll say how the economy is um, overheating and we need to slow it down. But mm -hmm. that's actually because they want to kill it. Um, they, they want us to go back to living in log cabins. 
Um, anyone who's actually read Marx will realize no one in their right mind wants to live in the society that Marx posits. Marx's idea, if you read his letters, is that everyone lives in the wild, in a log cabin, trading for only th the things they need because this is the ideal society. I really don't want to live. I've lived in a log cabin before. And if I had a choice of living in a log cabin or grabbing an axe and going wild and killing everyone I saw um, until I got shot in the street, I'd, I'd go for the second. I mean, oh, wow. <laughs> it, it is an insanely bad life that, um, like, I mean, it's up there in the, um, should I live in a log cabin um, for the rest of my life or should I take up a hobby of pulling my toenails out with pliers? It's you fairly just, much a just, balance. You just mentioned the melon type political people. And that's funny because maybe we could say that those melon type people want to hoard nature. They don't want to trade. They want to hoard. Well, nature. no, no, no. They don't want to hoard it at all. Um, they're nihilistic. They hate humanity. Can I mean, you it's not. On that, yeah. um, well, their idea is humans are bad. Get rid of us off the planet. They're not. They don't care about nature. They care about stopping humans. So, rather than suicide, they want to take everyone out. Okay, so that's I mean, like the the next step after hoarding is like. Hoarding is anti-trade, like you said, and the next step would be anti-human, like you just put it. Yeah, fairly much. If you look at these Extinction Rebellion people, what they're really wanting to do is make everyone extinct. I mean, their whole thing is, how do we kill off the human population? I mean, I'm sure if you gave them um, sort of control of the world, they would make Stalin, Hitler, and everyone else like that look like pussies. I mean, no the comment, um, no, no comment. <laughs> oh, I mean, look, I at can't, the, I can't um, comment on that. I'm German. I can't comment. Oh, the Ciara Foundation. Um, there, I mean, they've come out before in talks and said that the population of the earth that sustainable should never be more than 100 million people, which is absolutely insane. The population of the earth right now will fit in Texas and everyone will have a suburban backyard with a quarter acre. That's the entire 8 billion of us will fit in Texas with a suburban backyard, a nice large one. So all this BS about how much room we're taking up, how much we're degrading, not at all. Just most people have never gone outside their suburban backyard and actually seen that half the world is still wild. All right. I'm trying to bring this back to gold though even though that was very interesting and people will like that part, I guess. What would you say if we take the premise that the world will be running on Bitcoin SD, maybe in 20 years, 30 years, whatever, maybe faster, but what effects would that have on gold as an asset? Like could see... gold, yeah. Why would it have an effect on gold as an asset? I maybe mean... because people say that um, the commodity that is Bitcoin SD, could be but people don't buy of, gold because of that. But, but no one uses gold as money anymore. I mean, gold's not, uh, it's not even a good inflation hedge because it's negative now. Um, it's not a store of value. It's not, so, I mean, people don't buy gold for that reason. They buy gold because it has a value. So th there's no correlation between Bitcoin in any, any possible history and gold. I mean, anyone's possible history. If we take a near infinite universe, I don't believe in infinity, um, and we extend everything that can happen with gold that is feasible, there is no way that this correlates with Bitcoin, ever. There's just no correlation to Bitcoin, ever. it's just completely irrelevant. So it's like saying some guy on Alpha Centauri, what did he have to do with Buddha? Nothing. I mean, you can make conspiracy theories up to the yin yang and say that really a Buddha was an alien, but the reality is nothing. All right, question answer. What would you personally prefer, a gold standard or a Bitcoin standard? 
Neither. Neither. Okay. Why would I? I mean, um, it should. Uh, one, there was no real gold standard ever in history. Um, between bimetallism, um, uh, sort of fractional reserve banking, all sorts of other things, um, there's never been a gold standard ever. That's what people. There's been a gold exchange standard. Um, and people confuse that with a gold standard, but the reality is there's never been a gold standard. Um, should Bitcoin be used as a commodity? Should it have value? Should it be money? Yes, but they're different questions. Um, there's a difference between saying every country in the world must have a system based on native Bitcoin without fiat on top, um, which was never the intention. Bitcoin's a cash system. It's designed for micropayments. It's not designed to replace the world's economy. Okay. I've got two questions from Twitter users. And one is from a user called Meme Reserve. He asked, he, he, he told me to ask you, can gold hmm. be double spent? Uh, well, let's see, you can shave it. You can, um, you can sell the bar twice. You can, I mean, do you actually get the physical gold bar? Um, have you destroyed it and checked that it uh, has um, sort of, um, uh, that it's pure, that you had it reassayed after you bought it? I mean, you can do all that, but it's damn expensive. Okay. And another question from another Twitter user called Mike Murphy, who's also in the MetaNet ICU Slack. He wanted to know if Bitcoin SV could ensure to make the gold market honest. He's implying that there is a dishonesty in the current gold market. Maybe we can- Of course like there is, the, but, but that, that's how I've just mentioned a whole lot of problems. No, it can't. You still need auditors. You still need all the checks. Um, this is where so everyone's this is, going this wrong. Is nothing, they, they think yeah. you put it on chain and suddenly it's, it's honest, but how do I know that that gold is real? How do I know that you haven't done a bait and switch on uh, what I mentioned about auditing and different vaults? The reason we had to do all the vaults at the same time um, and have was there are scams involving people moving gold from vault to vault. Mm -hmm. uh, like there's not enough in some of the vaults. So you audit one and the next day you audit another. Uh, and why do you have to move it all? Because if you pack up gold bars and you see the pictures, how do you know they're not hollow? Next, um, you randomly need to select some and destroy them. And I'm serious in, in the whole destroying gold bars bit because people put um, titanium bars in the middle and you can make titanium at the right density um, with special processing techniques that are expensive, but they're cheaper than gold. So you have basically gold coated titanium and titanium is yeah. Yeah, so, so yeah. 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 expensive too, but uh, a titanium LA mix can be cheaper than gold. And that's all you need to do. And you can't tell from the outside. You can't x-ray gold. Um, the weight is the same. The volume's the same. So no, you have to actually cut the thing in half. Sounds terrible, actually. Hmm. So I mean, you have you... to randomly assay gold all the time. Otherwise, well, you don't know it. whether someone's... Yeah, exactly. So it's a terrible process. So I want to make the point there that Bitcoin doesn't magically solve things like this, but you've still got to have a physical process. And exactly. there's still going to be... You still have humans Things involved. Wrong. That's, yeah. that's maybe yeah. the point. Yeah. So, so you will still have the person too. doing the audit. They will still go and do their work um, and they will still check things off, but you will have a record that can't be lost or changed. So when someone signs off some uh, on something, um, there it is. But um, showing my age here, there was an episode of MASH once where the, the guys came in and they had to do kitchen duty. Um, I'm not quite sure why um, uh, the reality is that officers never do kitchen duty, but um, uh, for some reason in the MASH uh, they had to. Um, and they came in and they signed the thing and they didn't realize that half of the utensils were missing. 
So what they had to do was another scam and get the guy who took it over to sign off. Um, otherwise, they would be guilty of losing all the utensils because they signed it that they were there. So the same thing has to happen. If you don't check, then someone's going to diddle you. And um, it doesn't matter what you're on. If you're talking about real world assets, then yeah, Bitcoin doesn't solve that. Uh, no matter how many NFTs you want to create, um, there's nothing stopping the NFT about nothing, uh, having a unbounded number of nothings. The artist right. can make another NFT with nothing all he wants. Right. right. With that, I think we have uh, mm. to call time now. And I would like to thank Craig very much for joining us again. And we shall hopefully you, be with Craig again in another month's time. That sounds good. Thank you very much, all. Yeah. Alrighty. Thanks, Craig. Bye bye. Right. Talk Thanks, Craig. I'll talk bye. To you soon. Bye.